All right, what's up, what's up? So in the last video, we talked about network, uh, the OSI model, and the TCP IP protocol stack. This morning, I just want to talk to you about switches and routers. So a switch, its sole purpose in life, if you were to ask a switch, what are you here for? What do you do for a living? A switch would say, I forward frames. I forward frames. Because that's what a switch does. It forwards frames. And by frames, I'm referring to the Ethernet layer two data segments, data data portions, data packages that are uh, sent and received over the network. If you don't know what that is, go back to my last video and you will know what it is after that. And you should because you're going to need it for the test. So if you just open up a brand new switch, stretched straight out of the box, what will happen? Well, let's say we open up a brand new switch. It has four ports. Port one is where there is an attacker. So let's say there's somebody, there's a hacker, he walks into your organization, he plugs his penetration testing Linux distribution, like Kali Linux, he plugs that into a wall jack that's in a conference room. And that wall jack maps back to a switch, which is probably in a wiring closet. We'll get to this in future videos. But let's say there's an attacker plugged into that first port. And in the second port, there is, uh, in port number two, let's say there's Brian. So somebody named Brian is plugged into that one. And in port three, there's uh, somebody named Catherine. So you've got the attacker in port one, You've got Brian in port two, and you've got Catherine in port three. The first time Brian tries to send some data to Catherine, the switch is not going to know what to do. It, the only thing it knows is it looks at that layer two Ethernet source MAC address. And it sees, let's say that um, Brian's source MAC address is B for Brian. It'll see that in order to get to Brian, you have to send a frame out port two. So it remembers Brian's incoming MAC address, his source MAC address, and it stores it in a table. So it might say something like port two in column one, and then maybe in column two, it'll say B for Brian. Then it has to get that frame somehow to Catherine. It doesn't know where Catherine is. So it sends what's known as a broadcast. It just floods the network, the local area network. Um, in this case, it just consists of three ports, the attacker, Brian, and Catherine. And it'll flood out the frame and it'll say, hey, which, you know, where's Catherine live? Everyone gets it. Everyone receives the frame. They de-encapsulate. They process it. But only Catherine will respond with her MAC address. So Catherine would respond. She would send a Ethernet frame from the port three that has her source MAC address, which in this case, let's say it's C for Catherine. And now Brian and Catherine can communicate directly with one another, and they don't have to flood their frames. And this is known as unicast communication, uni for one. So I hope that makes sense. Now, this is what I want to talk about from a Security Plus perspective. If the attacker opens up Wireshark or some other kind of protocol analyzer and tries to sniff the, the, the communications. Let's say Brian is in love with Catherine and he's sending her like, I don't know, love, love, love messages. Um, if he wants to get in on that action, he can't, he's not going to see it because the nature of a switch is that it segments, it, 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 it doesn't flood that data out all of the other ports. So that's an inherent security of probability of a switch. The other advantage is that switches are really fast. All the forwarding happens in hardware. It's called actually an application, uh, it's actually called ASIC, application-specific integrated circuit. I almost forgot that. But all of this is happening in hardware. So the, the frames are forwarded in the hardware. It's lightning fast. The speeds are typically at gigabit speed. Sometimes it's 10 gigabit speed. And the network administrator can also segment the traffic by a virtual LAN, or it's also known as a VLAN. And so VLANs are another security property of switches where you basically create um, logical groupings. So you can say, you know, all of these switch ports are in VLAN 1, 2, 3, and all these other switch ports are in VLAN uh, 1, 2, 4. And that way you can group different departments regardless of their physical location and one department won't be able to communicate with the other department because they're in different VLANs, which is basically like saying they're on different networks, which is basically like saying they're on different streets. When it comes to networking, think of a, a network as a street and think of a computer as a house <laughs> with an address. And so what are some other uh, security features of switches? Well, you have port security. This is when the switch will remember maybe the first two or three MAC addresses that it sees on that port and any other MAC address it denies. And this is really good because it means that, you know, if I'm an attacker and I plug in my, my Kali Linux pen testing Linux distribution and I try to, you know, join the network, if port security is enabled, if the user already connected their workstation to that port, that's one MAC address that was remembered, and maybe they connected their IP phone to that same port, that's two MAC addresses that were remembered, and maybe they connected their virtual machine 
to that port. That's three. And let's say the uh, port security uh, policy was set to remember th the first three MAC addresses. When I connect, I'm not getting an IP address. I'm not going to be able to c communicate with any of the other hosts on that LAN. So that's a great feature of port security. Also, you can set up 802.1x, which is even better. You can use Radius or a diameter server, which is basically a fancy term for a authentication server. And you can basically force any, you can force the client to authenticate against the server. So before I even get to access the network, I got to enter a username and password. That is awesome. So those are some great advantages of switches. Routers are different. Routers, um, they don't mess with frames. They mess with IP addresses. And as a switch will forward broadcast, routers do not pass broadcast. They do not forward broadcast. They actually separate broadcast. They create separate broadcast domains. And um, that's pretty much what a VLAN is. It's a distinct broadcast domain. A router is a uh, broadcast domain segmenter. Sorry if that sounds kind of confusing, but just know that switches, forward broadcast, routers don't. And routers are all about IP addresses. Switches are all about MAC addresses. And the last thing I want to share about routers is that you can also configure an access control list on a router. So you can say, hey, you know, block all this traffic coming from this source IP to this destination IP. And typically at the bottom of the access control list, there is a deny. It's an implicit deny. It's not, it's not explicit. It's not explicitly configured, but you basically have a set of rules. And the last rule by default is always a deny. And so the rules are processed sequentially in order. And uh, when it gets down to the bottom, it basically denies if it hadn't matched any of the above rules. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. You know, I just made this video kind of off the top of my head. Uh, so if there's anything confusing in there, you know, go ahead and leave a comment. You know, let me know what you think about this video. You know, tell me, you know, so what did you think a switch was before you watched this video? Did you even know what a switch was? You know, let me know. Leave a comment. Make sure you thumb this video up. Subscribe to my channel. And tomorrow at 8 a.m. Uh, 7 Central, we're going to talk about load balancers. All right, so I, I am going to see you there, and it has nothing to do with the Olympics, like the balancing game. Okay, that was a cheesy joke. Anyway, the sun's, the sun's starting to go away. I'm going to go away. I'll see you tomorrow morning, all right? Bye.